Good morning. Welcome to your United Service. Whether you're a member of Second Valley Easton, a neighbour from First Valley Easton, or a visitor, you're most welcome. Crest facilities are available during the service for, every, for, for anyone who wishes to make use of them. Activity packs are also available from the vestibule for any children, and these may be collected at any time during the service. We would like to uh, welcome Connor McQuillan, who will be leading our worship for the month of August. Connor, you're most welcome. There will be a picnic on Sunday, the 21st of August, after the United Morning Service, for everyone from both congregations in the grounds of the Parade Manse. You're invited to bring your own picnic and blanket, but tea and coffee will be provided. The BB Family Barbecue will be held on Friday the 2nd of September from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Parade Manse, weather permitting, and everyone is welcome. BB restarts Monday the 5th of September from half six to half seven for Anchor Boys, and that's P1 to four. Friday the 9th of September, 7 uh, p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Junior Boys, and that's P5 to seven. Monday the 5th of September, half seven to quarter past nine for company seconds, for a company section, and that's year eight to 14. BB is also looking for helpers, and if interested, please contact Gardner McCauley. Mums and Tots will resume on Thursday the 8th of September. And if you or you know of anyone who would be in, who, sorry, who would be included in the prayers for others, or if there's a particular issue to pray for during our service each week, please, uh, please pass on your request to our minister or elder. You can also message us using the Facebook page or via the website. These are all the announcements. Thank you. God of eternity, God of all time, God of past, of present, of future, our times are in your hands. In times of calm, in times of change, in times of harmony and disharmony, you are our constant, your love our ever fixed mark. And so we set aside this time, these all too fleeting moments, as an offering of our worship, as an offering of our love, let us worship God. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. Faith received from him. 
be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. A reading from the book of Hebrews. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched round them for seven days. By faith the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jesaphat, about David and Samuel and his prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads and let's talk to God. Let's pray. Dear God, every day there are so many signs. The rainbow after the rain, our reflections in the puddles, the sun rising and setting, the moon coming out at night and going away by day, as the day turns to night and night turns to day, every day things are changing. But help us, God, to know that you are everywhere and that every place we are in is holy with your presence and your love for us never changes. And as we see you every day, help us to respond with love for you, for others, and for ourselves. In Jesus' name, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boys and girls, some of you said you were going to be able to come up and help me today. So if you would like to come on up, that would be really good. Just come up have a seat here. And if you're upstairs, if there's anybody there, would you like to come and join me? And I think, Simon, since you were helping with the Bible today, you're going to have to help as well. You don't mind? You know, my elders are always game. I bet you're delighted. All right. Hi there. You know, some people call Presbyterians the frozen chosen, 
And I think that everybody's going to be well thawed out today with all this heat. Isn't it warm? Were any of the girls coming from upstairs? Is anybody else? They're on their way. A few more. So thank you for coming up. And Simon, thank you for being a stooge as well in a moment. So just some of the girls. I thought I saw. Hey there. Come on up. Oh, and do you want to sit over here? Watch the cables. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Do you like sport? There was lots of it on TV for the last few weeks, the Commonwealth Games. Does anybody know the kind of games they had? What were some of the sports that people were doing? Was sleeping one of them? No. Nobody was sleeping. That's not a sport. I'd be good at it, though. I'd win. What do you think? There was swimming. That's absolutely right. I think somebody from Northern Ireland won a medal. Am I right? Can't remember. What else? Basketball. Basketball. There was. There was running. Very good. Did and gymnastics. That's very bouncy. Can you do any? Better not do it in here. We'll knock things over. Running was mentioned in our Bible reading today. I don't know if you heard this. It says, "Run the race." And because Simon's much younger than me. He's going to have a big birthday, but it's not that big compared to some of your birthdays out there. He's got a big birthday coming up next week. So just to, sorry, you told me, you shouldn't tell me. All right. Sorry, Simon's going to come up. And because he's younger than me, I bet he'd be really good at racing. Certainly in BB and things as well. What do you think? Do you think Simon would be good at racing? Do you think so? I think so. He's got big long legs, taller than me. So I thought, you know what? Let's make him race as well as possible. So I've got some things to make sure that he's going to be as good a racer as possible. Do you think that's a sensible idea? I think so too. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm just going to help. Because it's so hot and all the rest of it. But you know what? This time of year, there's a lot of bugs, aren't there? I tried to have tea outside the other night, and all the wasps came out. So I thought when I was looking in the garage, Simon, this might help keep the bugs out of your face. And because it's so hot as well, you know, I've been to Mexico. How about that? Got to keep that on. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to get sunburned because if you're out in the open air running, it's going to be a bit hot. So let's do that. Uh, what are some legs? In case your hands here, put those on. Mm -hmm. In case you fall over, don't want to hurt your hands and things. And in case you get bored when you're running, yeah. there's some cartoons. Do you know anybody like the Beano? It shows my age. I'm ancient. And there's some games if you ever want to play PlayStation. In fact, you have a bag as well if you find it you want to put in. I did have a bar of chocolate, but I ate it. Sorry about that. And uh, oh, I know, case when you're picking stuff up, so you could put that on as well. All right. That do? Do you think he's ready to run now? No. Why not? What do you think? Is that stuff not useful? No. Why not? Yeah, he's not going to be focused on running, is he? He's going to have to try and hold all this stuff, and then he may be not run. Do you think he's going to run faster with that on or off? off. You sure? Hands up if you think he's going to run faster with all that stuff on. <gasps> Hands up if you think he's going to run faster with all this stuff off. All right, well, Simon thinks so too. All right, I think if we take it all off, stick it in the bag. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Once again, I'll return it to this mysterious place where ministers keep so many things. You never know what's under there. And thank you, Simon. <laughs> the Bible today said in our reading to run the race, but to get rid of anything that stops you being able to run well. And as Christians as well, the writer was saying, you know, our Christian faith is like being in a race. To be a Christian is in a race, but there's some things you don't need because all you need is you. You've got everything you need already. And just like a runner runs, they've got their legs. You don't need anything else. And as Christians, God has given us everything we need to run the race of life, to be kind, to be good, to be helpful, and to do something I know you're going to do in a minute, because some of you told me you would, is to even smile to make somebody's day better. You have everything you need already. You don't need extra or special things. And God has a purpose for each of your lives, and you have everything you need. And on the way into church, some of you said you'd help me today to welcome somebody who's come to church. It's Connor. You're going to come over, Connor, and say hi. So you said you'd, say, you'd smile and smile to Connor. Hello. And I'm going to hand you over to Connor's hands, because he's going to teach us a song now.
built the nose to mourn us both They kept the birds and animals afloat The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him Moses led his people through the sea Taking them away from slavery The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Moses lived his life for you, oh thank you, that all through history you were faithful, thank you, oh thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. Of confession. Let's gather ourselves in a moment. Let us pray. Disturb us, O Lord, as we gather with your words of challenge and truth. Disturb us, O Lord. Move us beyond our complacency, our tendency to settle for less, our easy faith that costs us little. Disturb us, O Lord, and awaken us to the cost of changing the world, of changing the church, of changing ourselves. As we gather today, may we know that as we are in your presence, that we know that you invite us into loving action that can make us uncomfortable. So disturb us, O God, and help us rise to the challenge for Christ's sake. Amen. A reading according to the Gospel of St. Luke. Not peace, but division. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five against one family divided against each other. Three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, Mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Thanks be to God.
There's an app on my phone, and when you start it, if I can find it, it says, where will luck take you? It's called Lucky Trip. When you open it up, that question flashes up and asks you, do you like a beach holiday? Do you like a city holiday? Do you like a foodie holiday? Whatever it is, you won't know. Just answer a couple of the three questions, and then it will suggest a place. One person who left a review about it said, I booked a trip to a city I'd never heard of, and it turned out to be the coolest place ever. It's called surprise travel in the travel industry. The excitement of not knowing where you're going to end up, and companies promising to take you to places you have never heard of for the time of your life. You lot don't need an app for anything like that. That's you every single day. You do not know what tomorrow will bring. You're a crazy bunch. Some of you even go on holiday with the belief that your suitcase will come with you. <laughs> Bless you. Because if you have lived long enough, you know that tomorrow is as likely to be awful as it is wonderful. One day it's a birth, and tomorrow for another congregation, I'm conducting a funeral. In fact, given the news, every single night, relentlessly awful. It's a surprise most of you haven't crawled into a cold bunker and pulled the lid over your head. But yet, here you are, still going on, gloriously and crazily keeping on going. Our reading that Ray read for us from Hebrews today talks about what it means to have faith in the kind of world that you and I live in. In a world that so often seems out of control and beyond our ability to cope with. Chapter 11 speaks of all those in the past who have journeyed in faith. And that sort of 12 gives us an encouragement. The encouragement is this, that tomorrow actually might be awful. But it's never the end of your journey. I don't know what your week will be. But regardless of that week, it's never your final week. As Hebrews reminds us, in our walk of faith, we are called into the future by Christ, knowing that everything will pass, including our lives. Everything will pass except the love of God shown to us in Jesus. And not even a life that the world considered ending in apparent failure, because as you read through that list of people in Hebrews, it's a strange list to hold up as examples. Gideon and his eventual idolatry. Samson and his pride, which literally brought the roof down on his head. King David and his lusts that brought his family and reputation to nothing. Yet here they are, along with the rest of that mixed bunch of people in chapter 11, with drunken Noah, duplicitous Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with their dysfunctional families. If anything, it's only the sex worker Rahab who is the least hypocritical of all of them. And if you remember, she's listed in Matthew's gospel as an ancestor of Jesus. Yet for all their flaws, here they are held out as examples to us of righteous people. People for us with our many flaws who are held up as an example of faith lived out in the messiness of life. 
To live with faith in the crazy times that we find ourselves, the turbulent times, does not mean that you and I have to be perfect people, but that God is perfect and God's purposes will always come to pass. The miracle is that each of us can be part of those purposes through grace. They are held up as examples for us in spite of their failures. But they are held up because they never try to impress others or live for an audience. For in their own messed up ways, they always kept returning to God as their focus, even if it cost them their lives. That's why they're exemplary. You can never fail so much that God still does not have a purpose for your life. Understanding that not even our failures can stop God from using us, Hebrews also reminds us that we do not travel alone. You travel in the footsteps of all the people of God who keep company with you past and present. That great crowd of witnesses that chapter 11 talks about, encouraging each other onwards in faith. And here you are today, pausing on your journey in the company of the saints of Bally Easton. And maybe you need to pause, because right now it might feel as if you're at the end of your resources. There might even be a temptation to give up. William Wilberforce, known to many through their school history lessons as the person who introduced laws into the British Parliament to end the slave trade. In 1779, when he was first, or first introduced the bill, he was shouted down and laughed at. He was ridiculed and ostracized by the rich and powerful. But he continued year after year, from 1779 until 1807, when the tide of public opinion itself had started to change, even in places like Belfast or Dublin, when the likes of Oladiah Equiano, a former slave, lectured and taught his way across Europe and the big cities, helping people understand the truth of the evil of slavery and the dignity of all humans. Wilberforce continued to argue for the end of slavery itself, and not just the slave trade. And that happened in the British Empire in 1833, days within Wilberforce's death. He never actually saw it come to fruition. At one point in the midst of his struggle, when everything seemed hopeless and he was getting nowhere, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, sent a letter to Wilberforce to encourage him, and Wesley said this, Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them stronger than God? Be not weary in well-doing. Go on, go on in the name of God and the power of his might, till even American slavery, the vilest that ever the sun saw, shall vanish before it. Wilberforce did die within days of that sadistic trade being abolished. He didn't see the outcome of his life's work, yet like those in Hebrews, he kept the faith. Never give up. God is with you. And as our travels together as God people, let's make sure we get rid of those things that hinder us. Beliefs and notions about what it means to be a Christian. Growing up as a teenager in the 1980s, I remember the Christian bookstore in Belfast being full of books about the perfect prayer life or a spiritually organized lives or acting as if you had all the answers to life's difficult questions on hand for any situation. And there were speakers touring around who'd come to Belfast to the assembly buildings and give these great talks about how you could be perfectly prepared as a Christian for life. What a load of garbage. The horror for those who want to peddle you Christian paraphernalia, music, books, spiritual plans, or quiet time organizers, is that in God's kingdom, success and failure are no different in the end. Let that sink in. There is no difference ultimately between your successes and your failures. In God's plans, Tragedy and triumph are indistinguishable. That's what this book, this chapter in Hebrews reminds us of. Prophets who died, tortured, even Moses with that bittersweet end to his story who never made it to the promised land. That's why we fix our eyes on Jesus, 
crucified for all to see, a failure whose ministry had ended in public shame, so much so that even his disciples in fear betrayed him and fled. What would the obituaries of the papers of the day said about him? Every single one of them would have been wrong. The tragedy of the cross became a triumph of love through God's power. When I came to the village, my very first day was an interesting place to be in the manse. Nothing was really unpacked. The kitchen was full of boxes, and I was sitting, I did have clothes on, in one of the rooms on a chair, because there wasn't even any furniture at that point. And suddenly, as I was eating my takeaway Chinese with a plastic fork, because I couldn't find out where any of the cutlery was, there was a thump on the window, and I nearly jumped out of my skin, and it was the police welcoming to complain that somebody had said that all these parking on a Sunday was disrupting the village, and there had been complaints. I mean, I didn't like to say there's two churches, and it was probably that lot down in first. I thought, gosh, what a friendly place I've come to, that somebody set the police on me in my first day. So I sat down again having a chat to the community police officers, and then I could hear water. I thought, that's unusual. I don't recall there being a fountain. As I walked down the corridor back down to where, if you know where the cloak room is, as such in the manse, water was gushing through the ceiling in a, a beautiful fountain. It wasn't an installation, and it required for an emergency plumber to be called to come and fix it. Well, I thought as I finally got to bed, this will be an interesting place. And it has been. As it is, Eddie in first and myself here in second, through the years, I've sat with you in some wonderful times, and yet we've also had to sit with you beside some horrific times. We have seen such dark moments, and yet still you are here. I don't know what your week will be like next week. Good news, you don't know either. We will hope for success, or even holding our heads above the waters, Let's hope so. Or maybe it will be more difficult. Don't give up. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Your journey in faith continues this week and will always continue by the grace of God. For God loves and cherishes you and has shown you this love in Jesus Christ and has poured out this love into your hearts through the Holy Spirit. Go well, for may we all travel well together. Amen. We worship God with our offering. Let us pray. Ever-present God, may we see you every day, challenging us to step out and to step up in faith, and may we pledge today to respond with boldness for your love's sake. God, may we wake up to the signs that are all around of a world in need, fuel poverty, food poverty, homelessness, migration, war, greed, complacency. The signs confront us every day. May we respond with love. May we respond with compassion. May we respond with action. May we know that we have enough and that we are enough as your people to bring about change and justice for the world. In reading the signs, may we discern the first step that you invite us to take as individuals and as your body, the church, knowing that through us, your kingdom will come. At this time, we also pray for any who are ill or in hospital at this time. And especially, we remember Kevin and Ara, as well as all those others known to us. We remember those caring for others and that you bless them with rest when needed and encouragement for their faithfulness. For all those in recovery after illness, we pray for their ongoing healing and recovery of their strength. Bless all those whose compassion and medical skills continue the work of healing begun by your Son, our Lord Jesus. Awaken us, Lord, this day, 
strengthen us and lead us on to respond as your people, loved by you, and to bring your love to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of you, now and always. And all God's people said, Amen.